I'm Davey, and I'm awesome, and welcome to Davey's Awesome Movies, where I review the styles of movies that I love, the alternative, B-rated, cult style flicks. And this week, I'm reviewing a movie that I loved as a kid. This movie was made in 1990, and was directed by Albert Keane, who directed one of my favorite movies ever, Cyborg. And it was written and produced by Stephen Tolkien and Lawrence J. Block. And it was produced by Joseph Calamari. That name sounds fishy. Menachem Golan one of the creators of canon, but this is what well after he was forced out. Tom Kronowski, and of course, Stan Lee. And it was based off characters created by Jack Kirby and Joe Simon. Made by Marvel Entertainment Group and 21st Century Film Corporation. And distributed by Columbia TriStar Home Video. Ladies and gentlemen, the not-so-popular, not-so-well-received 1990 version, Captain America. Well, that was a thrilling title sequence. The movie opens in Porto Vera, Italy in 1936. See? And a few Italian military men show up to get a boy. No. Well, by get, I mean kidnap. But they're Mussolini soldiers, so they could do whatever they want. As far as that boy's family... I know this seems a little harsh, even by Italian military fascist, but hey, it could be worse. I mean, have you seen Salo? Then we meet a scientist who is not happy about what they are doing, especially the fact that they're going to do her experiment on a young child, an experiment that is going to make him stronger and more intelligent, but make him deformed. <laughs> that doesn't stop them, though. Ah, kids, throwing a fit every single time you conduct military experiments on them. Then we fast forward seven years. It is now 1943, and the scientist has escaped to America, and she is now working with the White House to help them produce some super soldiers. And of course, their first subject is Steve Rogers. In the comic books, Steve Rogers was from New York City, not Renato Beach, California. Then again, in the comic books, the scientist wasn't a female scientist named Dr. Maria Vaselli, but rather a male German-slash-Jewish scientist named Abraham Erskine. So don't look for a lot of comic familiarity in this. We see Steve Rogers saying goodbye to his loved ones. Steve Rogers is played by Matt Salinger, who apparently was really excited to do this role because he grew up being a big, big fan of the Captain America comic books. Most people remember him from Revenge of the Nerds. He played that guy. Matt Salinger also has a famous father. His father was the author who wrote The Catcher in the Rye, a very famous book. I've never read it personally, but I assume it's about a former baseball player who opened a deli or something. Steve Rogers gets taken to a secret lab, underground, a little diner. Because of you, I have the chance to make a wrong thing right. Yeah, I guess. I mean, a little boy was taken from his family, who was then murdered right in front of him, and then taken to a lab where they conducted horrible, painful experiments on him that have caused him to become deformed, but hey, now you're doing it to an American and you're not going to mess up his face. So yeah, even Stevens, now to transform Steve Rogers. It stings a little. Vital signs are stable. It is a success. He got through the experiment. He's stronger and he's smarter and he's faster. He's now Captain America. So everybody gathers around to congratulate Dr. Baselli. Well, almost everybody. But to be fair, that's kind of on them. I mean, you should have made him RSVP and then been like, no, you're a Hitler guy. Captain America jumps into action and the gunman finds this a little... Shocking? <laughs> Dr. Vaselli has some last words for Captain America. God bless you, my boy. Stop them. Never give up. Which means no more super soldiers. He's gonna be the only one. Until they try to make the Hulk. Steve Rogers did take a couple of shots from the gunmen, so they rush him to the hospital and the doctor recommends that he rests for quite a while, but the army colonel says 
we need him right now because the Germans are about to launch a rocket at the U.S. within a couple of days. So even though he is injured from the gun wounds... Where did you say that launch site was? He doesn't care because he's Captain America! So that's being done. Captain America, in red, white, and blue instead of camouflage, arrives at a German base. <laughs> And we finally get a glimpse at the Red Skull. Ew. After the Captain America the First Avenger came out, a lot of people did criticize the makeup they did on Hugo Levy, making him look like the Red Skull. To them, I go, watch this movie, and then shut up. Captain America fights his way through the German soldiers until he gets to the Red Skull himself. <laughs> Well, that didn't go the way he expected it, but he still comes a charging! It's an American. Just when I am needing help of my English lessons. Dude, your lips didn't even move. The Red Skull quickly gets the upper hand. <laughs> and straps Captain America to the very rocket they're going to be sending. Where are they going to be sending it? How you say, Casabianca? White out. Just as it's about to launch, though, Captain America grabs the Red Skull's hand. He's going to take him with him. But... The Red Skull thinks quickly. Falling hard! No. Oh my god! Dude, he wanted you to go with him, not just give him a hand. Just as that rocket is about to hit the White House, there is a kid on vacation with his family to visit the White House, and he's taking pictures, and he sees the rocket. He also sees this. Okay, I'm... No rocket scientist, but, uh, I don't think that would work. So where did the rocket go? Well, that was descriptive. The little boy was Tom Kimball. After this, we see a montage of, like, newspaper clippings leading all the way up to the 90s. Part of these newspaper clippings having parts about Tom Kimball and his rise in politics all the way until... Thomas Kimball was elected President of the United States. Well, after his encounter with Captain America, he did very well for himself. President Kimball is about to put forth a bill that will reduce our toxic waste consumption by 90%. A lot of people are not happy about this, though, including a General Fleming who is trying to get him to make a compromise, but the President is not willing to make any sort of compromise. Good luck in Rome. Then we go to Rome and see a meeting that General Fleming is at. If Kimball ain't stopped, he won't get a new leg lamp, which will make for a very bad Christmas story. Side note before you guys pause the video and inform me, yes, the woman who plays Captain America's mother in this also plays the mother in A Christmas Story. So both the parents from A Christmas Story were in this movie. The reason I didn't put her clip in there is because it didn't really make a big difference and she's not that noticeable. Back to this meeting in Rome, it turns out is being held by the Red Skull. We don't kill him at all. It's not a disguise. Apparently he's had a bunch of plastic surgery to make his face look like that. So the Red Skull only appears once in this movie with a Red Skull. He explains that the reason that he doesn't want to kill President Kimball is because it did them no good when they did it before. Apparently in the time that Captain America has been in Alaska, his organization has been responsible for the assassinations of both John and Robert Kennedy and also Martin Luther King. And all they got were... Saints. Martyrs to the goals. So basically, they stayed very busy after the war. The Red Skull instead wants to kidnap President Kimball and install a device in his brain that will make it to where they can control him and make him do whatever they want. Then we go back to somewhere in Alaska where a group of men have found a glacier and something inside it. I know it's kind of creepy being in here with this thing, but... Creepy, there's a hand sticking out of the glacier. Why wouldn't the hand freeze over too? And of course, the glacier starts to break. He doesn't say much, but I can tell you what he's thinking is, God, I could go for a hot chocolate. This makes the papers, and of course President Kimball sees it, who's been obsessed with Captain America ever since that little encounter he had when he was a kid. So he calls his best friend, who is also a reporter, Sam. Were you sure it's not some kind of crazy hoax? Sam is played by Ned Beatty. <laughs> He's our favorite actor. 
We don't, don't care, care if you get it. Back to the Red Skull. He wants Kimball monitored at all times. In this movie, the Red Skull is a man named Tazio de Saints. Even though in the comic books, he was a German named Johann Schmidt. Captain America walks his way into northern Canada. That suit was made of heavy rubber. The same heavy rubber they used on Michael Keaton in the Tim Burton Batman movies. Combine that with the fact that in this they were filming during a Yugoslavian summer where at times it got up to 105 degrees plus him wearing that suit. Many times during filming they had to stop because he almost got heat exhaustion. The Red Skull also found out about Captain America's return and orders his daughter to go kill him. His daughter Valentina takes her crew with her to northern Canada, finds him, and attempts to kill him when Sam shows up. He's a reporter, so naturally he would be able to find out where in all of northern Canada Captain America would be. Sam is trying to get information about the Red Skull and he's sharing what information he has with Captain America. However, Captain America is not convinced that it is not 1943. He is not convinced that he's outside of Germany. What he is convinced about is this guy must be a German spy. So he pretends he needs to pull over so he can throw up and then... He ditches Sam there. But hey, it's Canada, so just find a moose and ride it home while you drink maple syrup, because that's apparently what a lot of Americans think happens in Canada. Captain America, though, does make it to the US, and back to California, and all the way to his old girlfriend Bernie's home. Convinced yet? They go inside and have a talk about how she waited for him. She waited 16 years, but then after waiting for 16 years, decided that if she was ever to have a child, she needed to get married and have one now. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Well, look at this way. Someday after he fights Thanos, he'll go back in time and find you and marry you. Oh, hey, you're not Agent Carter, and that was from the good Captain America movies. Sam has figured out where Captain America would be. Tom, I got his old girlfriend's address. There's a Bernice Cooperman living at 90 Bristol Court. Valentina apparently bugs Sam, even though they never met up. Captain America goes to stay with Sharon, Bernie's daughter, who looks exactly like Bernie. Almost to the point you would say they might have been played by the same actress. They were. And Sam, the reporter, shows up at Bernie's door. Prove it to you, I've just... Ah! No! You didn't have to kill him, you could have just made him squeal, he'll do it! Sharon and Cap get the call about her parents. They head over and Captain America sees Sam, who's clinging on to life just long enough to say something to Captain America. That's something from Tom and Sam's childhood. Sam lent it to Tom, and Tom had it on him when he saw Captain America, and they think it's lucky, I guess. After this, Sam dies, and Sharon goes to see her mom. She died too. However, Sharon's father did live, and while they're visiting him at the hospital in critical condition, the news comes on and they see that the President Kimball has been captured. But Steve has a plan. They go and find the diner that is still there, find the entrance to that secret lab where he was turned into Captain America, and they find this. Vaselli's diary. Hey, that's private, okay? I don't see how you knowing about her secret crush is gonna help you. They soon realize though that they were being followed. Cap, these are regular non-super soldier people. They don't have powers, they just have guns. This should not be a problem for Captain America. They found them, despite their genius hiding place. But Captain America fights! Yeah! Cap fights them down to one man. In these late 80s, early 90s action films, in every group of henchmen, there was just one Asian martial arts expert just peppered in there. Still, he's no match for Captain America. Captain America beats him and then holds him up because he wants information. He wants to know where the Red Skull is. I don't know nothing. And the audience can't see anything. Back to the Red Skull. He's got the president and he explains to them that they're injecting him with chemicals 
that will make his brain tissue ready and receptive to receive the implant. Captain America and Sharon arrive in Rome. Very quickly. Like, way too quickly. They flew on a commercial airline, and even if you could go to the airport and there was like literally a plane leaving that minute, still don't think you would have gotten to Italy that quickly. While driving around Rome, Captain America decides that he does not want to take Sharon into danger. Again. Even though that makes no sense. If he didn't want to bring her into danger, why wouldn't he just not bring her to Rome? So he pretends to be sick. What are you doing? What? I can't believe that would work twice. Captain America goes and finds the Red Skull's childhood home. You know, his home before the fascists took him. But the problem is, Captain America does not speak Italian, so he cannot speak to the people that live there currently. Buongiorno! Mi dispiace a disturbare. She took a cab. Apparently Captain America didn't realize they have those in Italy too. Captain America finds a recording of the night that the Red Skull was taken from his family. They make a copy of it, and then they find out what the Red Skull's lair is. And after this, they split up. She got captured, but that was part of the plan. Valentina finds her recording. The president got a hold of some acid, poured it into his jail bars, and was able to escape. The president very quickly, though, gets surrounded and decides he's not going to let them control him. No. That wasn't a good no. You got to put more feeling, more passion into it. Like this. No. Much better. Captain America gives him this. Sam wanted me to give this to you. This doesn't help the story at all. It's just, I don't know. But they get to a phone. This is the president. Give me NATO command. Then we finally have the showdown between Captain America and the Red Skull. But this time, Captain America turns it around. He even gets his shield back. The Red Skull retreats and gets to a detonator that will make a big, big explosion. 70 million lives out like brief candles. Like I said, big, but Captain America has got this. <laughs> but wait a second, wait a second. Yeah, maybe that killed him, but the detonator was still about to go off. That, that wouldn't have stopped the detonator from causing the explosion. So what did stop the explosion? Ah, oh, that's right, they didn't have the money for it. A little late, guys, but, you know, there was still a bomb that was supposed to go off. But I guess we're just not going to explain that. So there you have it. That was the 1990 version of Captain America. Sort of 1990. I mean, it was done in 1990. It came out in the UK in 1990. But in America, we didn't get it until 1992. This movie was a very low-budget movie, though. They made this whole movie, a Captain America movie, for $3 million. So take that into consideration, because when Captain America, First Avenger, Winter Soldier, Civil War, on each one of those movies, they spent more than $3 million on the catering. Interesting side notes, there was actually some bigger names that were up for this movie. Dolph Lundgren was considered to play Captain America, but he opted out to go play the Punisher. I'll get to that movie later. Apparently even Arnold Schwarzenegger was up to play the movie, but they decided, let's not do this considering his accent will give away the fact that he's not American. Although I would have loved to have seen a Captain America played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's right, I am Captain America. I liked baseball and apple pies. Yes, that's right. Get me to Captain! Val Kilmer was considered to play this role, but instead decided to go film The Doors. Smart move! Another interesting and sad note on my part. The original script for this was actually made from Canon Pictures. Canon Pictures was slated to do it, but then with all their legal problems and whatnot, they gave up the rights. My Heinem Golem went to 21st Century to do this. But in their original script, the screenwriter wrote it with the intention of Michael Dudikoff, Duty, playing Captain America, and Steve James from the American Ninja movies playing the Falcon. I would have watched the crap out of that movie! However, though, the original script is almost non-existent in this. There's some of it in the director's cut, which a lot of people will say is better, but it's longer and... 
It's hard enough to sit through this one. The thing is, though, is as a kid, I did love this because it was a superhero. That's all I cared about. It was a superhero, and they didn't make a lot of superhero movies back then. So I was happy, but as an adult going back and watching it, realizing this wasn't very good. Not just on a production standpoint, the script was very thrown together and very rushed. The action sequences were not fantastic. The acting wasn't fantastic. But this was early Marvel movies. They did not have big budgets. They didn't have a lot of investors. They didn't take superhero movies very seriously back then, unless it was Batman or Superman. But even then, you got three movies and then they would ruin it. Exhibit A, Exhibit B. It's worth watching on a nostalgic front, and if you're a comic book fan to have in your collection, but for once I will say the newer ones were way better. I'm actually a fan of the Chris Evans Captain America movies. I will say this, however, a few months ago I reviewed the 1994 Fantastic Four movie that never officially got released, and it makes me wonder why. You were willing to release this piece of garbage but not that one? Come on now! So on that note, as far as my recommendation for Captain America, if you like terrible movies and making fun of them, have fun. So there you have it. That's my review of Captain America 1990. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications for when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of the 1990 Captain America movie. Love you guys.